Well, hey guys, it's uh, Thorzax here. And I just wanted to go ahead and kind of show off some of the um, upgrades that I've made to the K31. Uh, for one thing, uh, I went to Peter Odin, okay, and you can find him at SwissProducts.com. Uh, and if you go through all their products, you know their sites and all that stuff, and you get down to the bottom there, uh, he is a leather, cla uh, a leather crafter. And uh, he makes all kinds of different, you know, accessories for different military type rifles. And even if you had something that was, you know, something more on a custom basis, you know, you could talk to him and, you know, he could probably make you something that you, you know, that, that, that you want. Um, what I'd like to do is um, I'd like to kind of show you a little bit of his handiwork here. Um, as you can see. Uh, I've ordered one uh, with the Swiss Crest. Uh, you can get these plain, or you can get uh, you can get them embossed, you know, with all kinds of different you know designs and things like that. The more elaborate the design, the more it costs. You can get them plain, whatever. Uh, let's take a look at the rifle here. Okay, what I did do is I got sight covers as well. Now it's important to get sight covers because you don't want uh, lint or um, any, you know, any dirt or any lint or anything like that to get into, you know, the rear aperture here because you know that's the last thing you want to see when you go ahead and line up your shot. Uh, as you can see, I also have a front cover. And if you go underneath here, it also has a cutout right here for the bayonet lug. Helps hold it on there. So, anyway, these are still new, so they're rather stiff. Um, I took the liberty to go ahead and upgrade the front sight. This front sight here is an Anschutz, and as you can see, let me get a little closer here to the camera, uh, it's adjustable. And what you do is you can dial this so that it'll meet the light conditions where you'll get the best sight picture you know that's one thing that wasn't um, happening with the insert that came with the Swiss product and so I decided to go ahead and upgrade here uh, eventually I'd like to upgrade on the rear as well but I'm, I'm not gonna worry about that right now uh, anyway I wanted to go ahead and show you guys the K31 you know, show you how things are moving along here. Like I said, uh, with his, you know, he's, you know, he stitched all of this and made all of this. Uh, you know, it, even the little cutout here, uh, you know, for the for the sidebar that holds the the front sight. I mean, the the rear sight. Uh, you know, just really good quality. One thing I will say uh, about Peter is that, you know, it isn't like rolling, you know, it's not like rolling up to a fast food restaurant and ordering what you want and having it there in, you know, five minutes, you know, see it at the second window or whatever. Uh, he has a regular job and a normal life just like everybody else and, and he does this as a craft that he, you know, likes to do. And uh, so it might take you a while to get him to make you something. I mean, uh, I waited a while. I'm not going to say how long, but I waited a while. And um, but I'll, I'll tell you what, it was worth the wait. I mean, I mean, this is very, very good quality stuff, uh, top notch. I mean, I really will say that. You know, he 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 makes good stuff. Uh, all grand total. With the uh, sight covers and the, um, uh, the, 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 the cheek piece, um, I think it was somewhere around about 140 bucks, which I don't think is really all that bad for what you're getting. You're getting custom made, you know, cheek piece. You're, you know, and that was with the, uh, you know, with the crest on it and all that. Um, you know, it just snaps on there. It has a cutout on the other side. Uh, I can show it to you down here, <clears throat> but it has a cutout here on the other side where um, 
you know, uh, your, your sling swivel will go in. And also, another thing too, there's two little holes right here that you can line up and then you can put the screws through to hold your, um, uh, your, your little bar there in and then that way this does not move. Now I haven't done that yet on this, but I'll tell you what, this really does give a very comfortable cheek weld. I mean, you throw this thing up there and it's, you're, you're looking right through the sight. I mean, this is, this is really good quality. Speaking of quality, now I told you guys earlier that I was trying to emulate, you know, the, um, you know, the GP11 ammo. And that was another thing too I wanted to go ahead and, uh, you know, kind of address. Now the GP11 ammo is 174 grain Cooper nickel bullet. Get my glasses on. And, uh, as you can see, this is tarnished, but you know, it, what's the head stamp say? Mm. This is 1974. Yeah, this is head stamp 1974. I can't see anything without my glasses on anymore. But anyway, this ammunition is stamped DA. You can see it there. Anyway. Anyway, the DA brass is uh, reloadable. Um, you get the most amount of reloadings out of this brass. However, this brass is Berdan Prime, so you're going to need a Berdan decapper and everything like that in order to reload this. But uh, pretty good results can be had, you know, by reloading this brass. So, you know, it's, it was never made, you know, to. Uh, it was never made, you know, to uh, uh, reload. I mean, you know, it was supposed to be used in, you know, battle type situation. You know, you're whatever. You're not going to go out picking up your brass, <laughs> you know. So, uh, but it is very good quality. Um, I'll tell you what, this stuff shoots flat. Gets with it. This shoots match quality. I've seen this stuff go through the same hole. I mean, at 100 yards, just shoot one hole all day long. Uh, it's an amazing bullet. Uh, the, they did their homework. Also, another thing to you, if you see, this is a Cooper Nickel uh, jacket, uh, and they do have a grease ring around the cantaloupe of the bullet. So, you know, it's it's uh, that serves two purposes. And what it does is that it helps lubricate the Cooper Nickel, you know, to go down the barrel. Um, and also, a little bit of that stays behind in the barrel, just like when we shoot cast bullets. You know, it stays behind the barrel and helps the next round go through. Uh, it was a real popular thing back in the day when they shot a lot of Cooper Nickel bullets out of... Out of uh, out of the rifles that what they would do is they would have a little canister there and they would take their bullet and they would dip it in STP and what they would do is let it drip off of there so it wasn't all you know like soggy and then they would load it in their rifle and they'd shoot it and they did that at the national matches quite a bit however somehow or another somebody messed up and uh, they ended up blowing their gun up or something like that anyway so that flew out the window they don't allow you to um, lubricate your bullets anymore in national match. Um, yeah. But anyway, like I said, uh, I'm trying to emulate this round uh, and get the, uh, you know, feet per second out of it, uh, out of my hand loads to emulate this round. Uh, I also went ahead and I, uh, I spent the money and I got two cases of 480 rounds a piece of the GP11. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't think I really lost out there. It's all, you know, DA stamped. It all can be reloaded. I just have to wait until, you know, we get Berdan primers back in this country. You can buy them in Canada, but you know, I mean, and then you got to pay some sort of ATF stamp and 
you know, some crap like that and file some sort of paperwork in order to transfer it over here to the United States. And by that time, it's just not even cost effective. So until, you know, things get settled out there with Europe, uh, it's whatever we got, really. You know, you go out there and look on the Internet. At least I, I can't seem to find any, you know. Uh, I had a friend of mine help me out. Uh, speaking of a friend of mine, the guy that I was uh, going to point you guys out to, and I couldn't think of his name at the time, uh, I, I gave you some bum info, uh, and his name is Lencak, L-E-N-C-A-C, and you can look him up on YouTube, and he's got everything you ever wanted to know about the K-31. Uh, he goes into a lot more in depth than... You know, I'll do on my channel. Uh, he rebuilds these rifles, and what he does is he uh, he sells them. I'm gonna tell you something, guys. If I knew back then what these rifles were when I bought this one, I would have bought a whole truckload of them. These are excellent guns. They're excellent guns. And also another thing too. There's a lot of um, uh, opinions out there. And, you know, I, I kind of look at it this way. If you got a SIG barrel, SIG barrels will shoot just as good as, you know, your Hamley barrels. And it, it's one of those things where popularity demands, I guess, you know. It's almost like this, you know. Say like, um, you know, these G3 rifles that are coming into the United States and they're being sold, uh, the CMET rifle. Well, say like um, HK was having a hard time cranking out barrels. So they went ahead and contracted with SIG, okay, to go ahead and make their barrels. Oh, of course. If you don't have a SIG barrel in your G3 CMET, then you got junk, man. You know, you should have really looked at that before you bought it. You know, that's all crap. You know, this gun shoots better than I can. And with these improved sights and, and, and whatnot, uh, it, it's only going to get any better. It's just going to get better. That's it. It's going to get better. And, and whether or not it has a SIG barrel in it or a Hamley barrel, it really doesn't matter. I've seen you know other videos where guys have shot the SIG barrels and the Hamley barrels. There's no difference. You know. And I'm sticking up for the guys that have the SIG barrels. You know, I've talked to Peter about this. Peter was he's an AdFid you know uh, K31 fanatic, and uh, he told me he says you know there is no difference. I I shoot them both, and I don't see any difference. Uh, you know, there's opinions. That's that's the thing. Oh, well, you know, the the, the Hamley barrel is made out of better steel. That's almost like saying, well, the the the, the Springfield Armory, you know, M1 Grand receiver uh, is the bottom of the line, you know, and and the Winchester is so much better. Well, they're all made to the same specifications, the same steel. In fact, if you go in there and you really research that, you're going to find out that all those billets, okay, for the M1 Grand were all made at Springfield Armory. All of them. And then they didn't serialize or stamp uh, certain billets. They sent them out to the contractors. They roll stamped them after they uh, finished the product on their machine. And there is subtle differences between the machining in, 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 in them. However, the companies did not want to buy the tools and dies and stuff like that in order to make the receivers or any of the uh, uh, equipment to go ahead and hammer them out. So the Springfield Armory went ahead and made them all. So they're all made by Springfield Armory. Uh, you know, that's just something I know. So that's, that's, a, that's a fact thing. There, there, you know, contractors will contract with the government because the government can go ahead and make a certain product cheaper and uh, they'll send it out for finished product to the contractor. Contractor will, you know, complete it, put their name on it, and then turn around and it'll be a government asset. I know that for a fact. So anyway, uh, before I waste any more of your guys' time, it's evening time. I'm going to get this uploaded on uh, YouTube. Uh, it's kind of late, so it's probably going to be up there around, I don't know, Pacific Standard Time, probably about 11 o'clock tonight. So, anyway, this is Thor's Axe. And uh, don't be a stranger. Stop by. You know, share, like, and subscribe. Tell your friends about me. You know, whatever. Um, 
Hang in there. Do some good shooting. I'm out.